So I have a question here for all of you today. How many of you here grew up with Invader Zim? Now, what if I told you that, as a matter of fact, the voice actor of the little robot sidekick Gurr, Ricky Simons, actually wrote a novel? Not only that, but I actually got the chance to meet him in person, interview him, and now I'm finally having the chance to review his work. And that will be the subject of today's video. Greetings everyone, this is Rambling Collector, back here with another book review for all of you today. And the subject of this video will be the novel Hitherto a Lion by Ricky Simons. Which, I just finished this book as of this morning, and I wanted to get the review done as quickly as possible while it was still fresh in my brain. More importantly, you guys, I apologize if this one will not be on video with me on the screen. I was having some recording issues, so this one will be going back to the old formula of just audio recording until I get the camera fixed. Anyways, you guys, let's get started with the novel. So with this being said, this novel absolutely blew me out of the water with some of the amazing concepts that were shown, and yet at some points it also gave me a little bit of a headache. Let's talk about that. So first off, because this novel is written as a space opera, this book is not your typical science fiction novel, with very descriptive writing and heavy focus on details and characters. However, this can also be to its detriment, as some of the complex terminology that is used here, as well as some of the character names, will throw you off at times to the point that you have to consult the pronunciation guide in the beginning of this book to figure out how to pronounce certain words, which can break the immersion of the story quite a bit. And thus I had to knock down a couple points for that, at the very least. Because at times it would leave me scratching my head in a little bit of confusion, wondering how to pronounce this character's name, or how to pronounce a certain word or term that would pop up from time to time. But what really kept me going was in fact the main character and his plight. That being Moon Raphael, someone who is both a virtual reality ghost, as well as a biomechanical lion named Phil Moon. And how that goes about is that apparently Moon Raphael was at one point attacked by this alien race known as the Boshk, which are the primary antagonists of this entire story. Now the Boshk are like something out of a Celtic mythology nightmare with long tree-like limbs and large antlers, which they used to essentially spin their victims around over their heads. And what this does is that this causes their entire state of being, their state of matter, everything about this person is completely erased until that victim is nothing but space dust. Which if you ask me, the fact that the Bosch don't just simply try to take over human worlds, but instead try to completely erase humanity from its existence is actually a very terrifying concept. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, when I read about what exactly the Bosch here do, I had to stop for a second and think, because the sheer concept of that blew my mind. But, more than that, having it where his mind is inside the body of a biomechanical lion, which has the sole purpose of destroying the Bosch, because the Bosch cannot detect animal thoughts compared to human thoughts. It's really a great way of finding a loophole against your enemies. And in my opinion, definitely made for some surprises for later on, especially for later when we discover the Bosch generals. But more than anything, though, I will say this much. Moon Raphael himself was a confusing character at times with his actions and his words, because on one hand, you see two sides of him because his mind has been split. One contains all of his negative emotions, his self-doubt, depression, his horrible memories, as well as his paranoia of other people. The other represents his more confident side, but also very controlling. As in, they had 
and to at one point have him essentially enslave an entire ship's crew just to clarify their loyalty to him. It isn't until later that he finally releases them, and mind you, that's actually a very twisted thing to do, is to control someone's very impulses to have them subservient to you and your will. Very messed up, but at least he does free them by the end. But let's focus on the main thing here. One of the biggest story elements that I saw from this, from looking at Mun Raphael's past and his present, is that at the end of the day, one of the biggest story elements here was an abused younger brother finally confronting his abusive older brother and overcoming his past. This, I feel, was pretty empowering to a lot of folks who ever read this book and discover that element. Kudos to you if you take inspiration from this. But to explain the brotherly bond here, Raphael was the middle child between his younger bro youngest brother, Paulo, and his oldest brother, Hunda. Hunda was described as the firstborn child, but he was full of rage and jealousy, always unable to extinguish the fires of his rage for even a moment, always demanding attention, wanting to be the spotlight, and always being jealous of Raphael. In fact, it actually leads to the point where Hunda himself was responsible for killing Raphael's mother, and nearly killing Raphael himself, after his mother was forced to kill Paolo, who had succumbed to a disease of madness. And in order to save her, Raphael covered for her, taking the blame for Paolo's death. Because of this, Honda sought it as an excuse to finally kill Raphael, and try to be the only child remaining under his mother's care. But in his wrath, he strikes her down with an axe to the neck. But because of this, we see how Honda, in his warped mind, views Raphael as his property. Because how dare he exit this, right? Which is completely messed up. Don't even get your hopes up, folks. This is completely messed up. And the fact that his hatred winds up causing Honda to become the... Bosch General Volvogarty, essentially a demon general, is sick. But more than anything, though, I liked how this novel was constantly making nods to classical music, such as Boliro and Una Fertiva Lagrima, which I actually listened to a little snippet of Boliro a while back, and I've got to say, I like how Ricky Simons has taken inspiration from some older classics like this. I like how he was able to construct a major drama which, whilst headache-inducing at times, was very true to its source. There was emotion, there was action, there was character development, everything of that nature throughout, which I thoroughly enjoyed. But now, let's move on to random thoughts. So. Random thoughts. If I'm going to be honest with you guys, one of the biggest headache-inducing moments throughout this novel, one that I had to actually put the book down in order to just take a breather, figure out what it was I had been reading, whilst also diving into another book, which is Morgan Takala's Stone of Hatred. I will say, this book had a lot of stopping points for me just to kind of keep going back, keep diving back in. But I will say one of the biggest moments for headache inducement and the one that had me stop to just process what it was that I was reading was having Raphael and his lover Luti somehow contacting each other from alternate realities where one or the other had been killed by the Bosch and thus the other was inhabiting the body of a biomechanical lion. But we're seeing their partner in the form of of a leopard that they would constantly be chasing after, one that would constantly lead them towards their goals, until eventually they were finally able to reunite further on in the second half of the story. How they do this is not thoroughly explained, except by their similar experiences of dealing with the loss of their colony, watching their partner be killed, everything leading up to that moment with the final battle of Volvogarte. All of it played out exactly the same for both, losing the other in the process. 
and I had to actually stop for a second and think to myself, what is going on? I had to think for a second of just what it was that I was reading because I will not lie to you guys. I am very well versed in science fiction. At least I would like to think that I am. But this, a space opera, kept throwing me for a loop with some of the complex ideas that they were sprouting here. I will say Ricky Simons is a very good writer. But this book kept on throwing so many twists and turns that... Would I read it again? I'm not entirely sure. I honestly don't know, guys. But, with that being said, let's move on to the final score. So overall, I would have to give Hither to a Lion by Ricky Simons a solid 7.5 out of 10, if I'm being completely honest. This novel has a lot of good going for it especially considering that it is a space opera. But more than anything else, it's the fact that it is written by the voice actor of a beloved character such as Gurr. But if I'm being honest, there were so many things with this novel that made me wind up either scratching my head or looking at it like, what am I reading? It left me feeling very ponderous of the subject matter at hand, like what exactly was going on, which when you really boil it down, the story itself is very simple. But because the author is focused on painting this massive picture within your brain, sometimes the story could tend to drag on a lot to its detriment. That's why I place it here. But I will say because of the fact that it was very well executed, it does earn a somewhat high score. Overall, would I read this again? Probably not, at least not until after I finish up some of the other books I've already got, <laughs> which, not going to lie to you guys, that might take a while. But, in all seriousness, though, would I say check this novel out? I would say yes, but be prepared. Go into it expecting a very highly descriptive and very... What's the word I'm looking for? very word-heavy story. It focuses on painting the photo, but not so much at progressing the story at a rapid pace. This is a book you'd want to take your time with to really think about, at least in my personal perspective. But more than that, if you feel like you can tackle it, I'd say go for it, guys. It would definitely be worth it just to support another indie author. Speaking of which, if you guys want to see some of the other indie authors that I've talked about in the past, I will leave a link to that playlist here at the end of the video. Or, if you want to see some of the other books that I've covered in general, which also includes a lot of the indie works that I've covered as well, I will leave a link to that playlist here at the end of the video as well. More importantly, you guys, thank you so much again for listening to this crazy man's ramblings. If you've stuck around this long to the end of the video, like I said, I apologize that I wasn't able to get myself on camera for this one. I'll find out what the heck was going on with the recording and see what was going on there. And hopefully for the next video review that I do, I'll be able to be back on camera for all of you guys. Anyways, thank you once again for listening. This is Rambling Collector signing off. Have a great day, fellow readers.